thank you very much, Professor Babel, for your time for this interview. It's really appreciated. Uh, My pleasure. Oh, thank you. So we're, this series of interviews are aiming to tackle misconceptions that surround engineering. Uh, you yourself are the director of the Unlock program, a leading research group in optical systems at UCL. And in 2014, you were invited to give the uh, Royal Society Clifford Patterson lecture. So it's safe to say that you're probably one of the best people to speak to regarding the misconception of women in engineering. So if you wouldn't mind, if you could give us a brief overview of your career in engineering and your current role. Okay. So... Um... I've always wanted to work in university, actually, um, because my father's an academic and he taught physics to engineers all his life and he, he made it sound very interesting and fun and exciting. Also, I was fortunate when we came, I was born in the Soviet Union and when we came to um, the United Kingdom in 1978, um, I was fortunate to go to a school which had a wonderful, wonderful physics teacher, Nathan Ordman, whom I was able to nominate for Teacher of the Year a few years ago, an Institute of Physics. And again, it made it sound very exciting. However, nobody really knew what engineering was, or electrical, even electrical engineering, or anything that was vaguely related to physics, um, but was more applied. And so when it came to choosing what to study in university, I went around lots of univer different universities trying to understand what one could study if one liked physics. But maybe didn't want to study physics in university, maybe we want to study a little bit, something a little bit more applied. Um, and particu in particular, I liked the electricity part of physics, and I didn't like mechanics part of physics A-level. And I happened to come to UCL, and at UCL there was a wonderful, wonderful admissions tutor called Roger Giblin, who made UCL seemed the most welcoming, wonderful place and electronic engineering the most wonderful um, wonderful topic and field to study and where one could study and physics and only the bits of physics one liked and then um, applied to a whole manner of problems um, that again sounded very appealing communications and electronics and really to understand how things worked and then make something with that knowledge applied in some way. So that's um, how I came to, to UCL to study electronic engineering and I enjoyed it and we have, we at the time, and we have had, we had the most extraordinary, extraordinary lecturers. I hope we'll continue with that, um, with our current staff. And it's a wonderful place because everybody's an individual and I think that helped a lot being an individual um, so I continued I went to do on to do a PhD um, I went to industry where I designed optical communication systems com some of the first optical fiber or amplified optical fiber communication systems and then I was fortunate to receive um, a Royal Society University Research Fellowship which enabled me to come and start my own group to research anything I wanted to do and I applied to start a first systems engineering group at, in a university in optical communication systems and the rest is history. I've been here for quite a number of years and our group is now, the Optical Networks Group at UCL is now one of the leading, internationally leading research groups in this area. That's very nice. Some wonderful, wonderful students and researchers some of the thesis you can see behind me, the blue thesis, um, now developing systems and networks and applying the engineering knowledge all over the world. So at which point did you realise you wanted to do research as opposed to going into the private sector? So I did research, and that I went to, at the end of my degree, as often happens, you, you apply for um, for jobs, and I went to look at those jobs, and I didn't, they didn't seem that appealing. Um, to me at, at, at the time, um, things which, which looked appealing required more experience, um, jobs that were taking graduates didn't look appealing, and so I fell into 
I, I, more than fell. I, I like doing research. I like finding out. I like the analysis aspect and the synthesis aspect. When you, when you learned how something works and then you apply that knowledge to make it better or you find out just, just how fundamentally good or bad it can be. Um, and so I stayed on to do a PhD, but then I did go to industry. But what may really made me want to do research is there are two factors. One, that you design something that's not just good enough, doesn't just do the job, because there are a hundred ways one can design something, an optical communication system, a um, piece of electronics, and it's just good enough. But what I wanted to really find out is just how good it could be. What's the fundamental limit? Not just good enough, this way works and that way works. What's the, what's the ultimate, op, ultimate solution? So that is the nature of research. That's, that's, really, that's really interesting. So one of, the, one of the things the UK currently has a problem with specifically is actually producing engineers. It's quite hard to get people into engineering. And one of the reasons for that is when you speak to the public and you ask them, what does an engineer do? They think of hard hats, construction sites. Uh, you yourself, you said you didn't like mechanical engineering. Is the image of engineering wrong in the public eye? What would you say on that matter? I think people really don't understand what engineers do. That it isn't, you know, we will look together just now, and when you Google engineers, you get an image of hard hats and calipers and civil engineering sites and um, spanners. That's very little of our reality. Our reality is high tech, our computers, the most sophisticated test and measurement equipment you can imagine. Think of the most exciting projects that you hear about. Um, I don't know, um, just heard about, um, the, we've just seen the images of Pluto. We just heard about the new results from, um, um, from the Hadron Collider from CERN, new particles being discovered. Um, there are the iPhone, the latest iPhone. All these are example of engineering, a very sophisticated, somebody has researched, designed and built um, these systems. And I think in the public eye and also in the eye of the children, it, it, they don't see that there is an individual that you and I are doing this, that we are designing one part of the next, um, um, the next communication system, one part of the next Hadron Collider, or one part of the next um, sophisticated instrument. And I think if you explain just how exciting it is, I think people will, children, adults, children and their parents will completely review What's, what's what engineering is all about. Do you think that it's ever too late in your life to get into engineering? Well, it's too, it's too late. Well, is it too late to take up sport? Probably if you take it up quite late, you're not going to become an Olympic athlete, or we just talked about music, or a, a top musical performer. But luckily for us, there's lots of um, different um, different areas where one can be an engineer, one can be a design engineer, a measurement engineer, research engineer. So there's lots and lots of opportunities, and I think there is plenty of room for all. Great. So if you could go back to when you go back to yourself when you were a child, and you had given yourself one piece of advice in becoming an engineer and becoming the best engineer, what would be that one piece of advice? Ooh, this off the is top very of your head. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let, let me let me think. What would what advice would I um would I give? I think I would give advice that one should spend more time building things and tinkering, and just not to be scared. Um, and these days, um, I see with my own children. You know. The, the, the thing that they're completely obsessed with are iPads and computer games. And it, it, it's a little bit sad. I think it's great. Let's give everyone an oscilloscope and an electronics kit. And 
um, send them off to um, a woodworking class. I think it's great to, to build things, even the, because, mainly because <laughs> once you grow up, there's just less of a chance to do that. I mean, gone are the days where you had the ZX Spectrum where you could code in basic language. I know. On the that was one of the largest attractions. Exactly. Well, was. it's interesting. I went to a school where um, um, we didn't, I didn't see computer until I came to university. That was a big, you know, I felt that that was a big hole I could, um, in my education. So, but I don't think the children of today are going to experience that. I think they're going to get computers very early. What they're going to miss is the possibility of actually building things, building things for their hands, which you never really get to do later, but it's just part of kind of wonderful um, world of creating something. Well, brilliant. No, well, thank you very much. It's been a really interesting insight into your engineering career. If you were to just point uh, one particular point that you uh, found sort of really exciting or very proud of, uh, what would that be off the top of your head? Oh, well... Don't um, be uh, modest here. Well, I don't know. I, um, what would be really the most exciting? Something to inspire someone. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the, there's been the greatest part of, um, I think, of my career has been my students. They have been absolutely ex extraordinary. And to see somebody come in, they don't know very much, but when they go out, they're experts, they're world experts, they're getting awards, they're being recognised. That's, that's wonderful.